Alrighty, welcome back everyone. We just got into the superlatives of the week. Definitely gave out some ones that maybe the game of the week you disagree with. No two ways about that, but there were plenty of games to choose from, uh, no doubt. So definitely whichever one you pick there, I'm more than on board for that. But Let's look ahead a little bit to that Week 8 slate. We will start our picks and everything tomorrow, but wanted to give you guys some quick thoughts about the upcoming games this weekend because there are some really good ones, and it starts with this one. Cannot wait for these two teams to face off in Austin, Texas. Definitely a really fun game, a very confusing game for me personally, but I'll leave that to the side for the time being. This is going to be an incredible game. Texas has a chance to truly separate from the SEC. UGA has a chance to get right back on track and become the conversation of the conference, possibly the team to beat in the conference if they win this game. So a lot going into this one. Really sp two elite rosters, two quarterbacks that I think are the two, two of the best in the entire country. Country, two of the best coaches in the entire country, an atmosphere that frankly I think is going to be on absolute fire and obviously plenty of postseason implications in this one. So I think it's going to be incredible. It's two really, really interesting teams that Georgia, you worry, you know, can they stop this Texas offense on Texas? Are they the team that they've shown the past, the first couple of weeks, or are they a little bit worse than that? I tend to believe the defense is a little bit worse than they've shown with the offenses that they face, but I still think they're really good. So we'll figure out what happens there. But one thing I can say with absolute confidence, there's not a lot that I can say with absolute confidence here, but one thing I can say, if Georgia spots them 28 points, they are not coming back in this game. They are not doing what they did to Bama. I can absolutely promise you that because Texas has a back end that is I don't want to say miles, but comfortably better than what Alabama has on that back end. So that's not going to happen. You cannot give them even a 14-point lead would be very, very sketchy against this Texas team to start this game. So Georgia's got to be careful. They have not been good, good starting games. They have started very, very slowly, and it's allowed teams like Kentucky, teams like Alabama, teams like even um, Mississippi State last week to kind of get their feet under them and then get moving forward. Mississippi State was a little bit cleaner. That game got closer than it looked at the end of the game. But at the end of the day, they got to figure out some stuff. If that back end is going to play at that level football, Quinn Ewers is going to have a career day and Texas is going to walk out with a 10-point win. So they got to be very careful, I think, for Texas. This is about planting your flag. There's so many different things that go into this game. You knew you were cir circling it from the beginning of the offseason where this was the one. This was the one where you prove you belong in the SEC or you prove that you're not quite to the level that everyone thinks that you are. So there's a lot going into this one. How Texas reacts, the mentality going in, the mentality of Georgia going into this game is going to be really fascinating to watch. And frankly, it could just come down to who wants it more at the end of the day with a, a team that a lot going in, a lot of emotions, a lot of different things playing into this one that it's going to be really, really tough to get a beat on this one before it starts to kick off. But we've had two big-time games thus far this this year that we've been circling for the entirety of the offseason. We had Georgia-Bama, we had Ohio State-Oregon this past weekend, and then we now have this one. Both of those have lived up to the hype, and frankly, I tend to think this one is going to as well. This is one of the very few teams that Kirby Smart has lost to in his career. Maybe he's out for a little bit of revenge. We'll see what happens in that one. Just keep Bevo and Ugo away from each other. And we're probably in pretty good shape. But incredible game. Cannot wait for that one to kick off. And then you got another incredible one. Tennessee, Alabama. Whenever they get together, it's awesome. There's no two ways about that. You get the cigar smoke at the end of the day. And it's going to be incredible to watch this one. Frankly, this is one of the most confusing games of the entire year. And if you told me two weeks ago... I wouldn't have nearly as many questions, or two years ago, two weeks ago, I wouldn't have nearly as many questions about these two teams. I would feel pretty confident making a pick. I'd probably pick Alabama by a hair, but at the end of the day, now I don't know. I'm all over the place. I think this is one of those games that it comes down to just covering your holes. There's going to be holes on these two teams. You know, the back end of really both of these teams are very, very, very much attackable. Nico not playing elite football, so if Alabama can get after him, maybe that opens up some doors. And then Alabama, can they play the consistency on offense? Can they find more receivers than just Ryan Williams? Jeremy Bernard did a great job last week, so hopefully that's a sign of things to come. But at the end of the day, these teams have issues. There's no two ways about that. They ha they are relatively exploitable teams, but whoever can cover those issues the best, whoever can keep a cap on this offense on these offenses and keep everything in front of them is probably in pretty good shape this week. And frankly, it comes down to Nico Iamaliava. Can he make the plays that they very much need him to make down the stretch of this game? Because it's a huge one. It's probably the most pressure-filled environment that he has ever played in. It's one of those games that if he doesn't win it, there's going to be some really mad uh, uh, Tennessee fans. And 
I wouldn't necessarily blame them. They badly want this one. This is the first one in quite some time. Even in 2022, you felt like it was a little bit more lean towards Alabama. Tennessee was obviously supposed, uh, able to win that night. But at the end of the day, this is the first one where it feels like these two teams are on totally even footing. Whoever wins, it won't be a crazy upset one way or the other. It's just going to be a fight. And you're going to have to figure out which team is really... Uh, has kind of regrouped after this past couple of weeks where you're really reeling a lot of questions, uh, a lot of questions behind and in front of the scene. So a lot of stuff to figure out. They have every ability to figure out and get a big win here, but it's going to be interesting to see how this one plays out because whoever loses is going to be asking quite a few questions on Monday. We also got one that's happening in West Lafayette on Friday, and I just had to bring this up pretty quickly because Oregon got that big win against Ohio State. That is absolutely massive. They are the leaders in the Big Ten right now. They feel incredible going forward. This is as dangerous of a game as you could possibly imagine because Purdue is just one of those teams. It doesn't make any sense. West Lafayette on Friday, it just happens. I, I don't know how to describe it, but I'm not saying Oregon's going to lose. I am saying this is one of the weirdest welcome to the Big Ten moments of all time. It's going to take a little bit of me mental toughness, a little bit of physical toughness to get through this one, and maybe Oregon falls victim to pr Purdue the same way Ohio State did all those years ago. But it'll be an awesome game. It's one of those that obviously you look at it now and say, Oregon's going to win, keep moving, no doubt about it. But Purdue's starting to put some things together on offense, and just one of those things. When you play a game that doesn't look like it's supposed to matter in West Lafayette, it starts to matter in a hurry. Um... And then we got to talk about the undefeateds that are trying to stay alive this upcoming weekend. Army invites Eastern Carolina into town. Should feel pretty good about where Army is in this game, but East Carolina, very good defense, played incredible against App State. So, mm, excuse me. So definitely something to watch this upcoming weekend. Cannot love this Army team enough. Frankly, Bryson Daly is so much fun to watch, and I tend to believe they're going to keep it rolling, but... You get a little bit nervous around this time of year when you have an undefeated year because every single week is that much more pressure-packed. And then we got Navy. They're facing off against Charlotte this upcoming weekend, one they should very well should be able to roll in. If they struggle in this game, then maybe it's not quite the team that we thought they were, but I expect them to win. I expect them to win very comfortably. Then we got a couple of teams out of the Big 12, Iowa State and BYU. Iowa State draws UCF at home, and BYU invites Oklahoma State to town. Both should be in okay shape. Both those teams, UCF and Oklahoma State, are very much reeling, not necessarily playing really good football, but... It's the Big 12, so you got to be very careful. Definitely one that they uh, need to get out with a win, but I, I relatively expect them to at least. And then uh, talking about BYU, BYU definitely, Oklahoma State is one of those teams that if Ollie Gordon gets going out of nowhere, then they're a t uh, load to deal with, but I'd like BYU in this game, at least as of right now. We'll break it down a little bit later in the week. And then Indiana gets a big test against Nebraska this upcoming weekend, a team that knocked off Rutgers to end their undefeated season. Got to be careful in this one. Definitely going to be an interesting one to watch. Pitt is on a bye, so they get to stay undefeated for at least one more week. A huge thing for the Panthers. But moving forward to this game, I uh, this is one of the more interesting games of the entire year, in my opinion, because I have a very little idea of what Michigan's going to be with Jack Tuttle at, uh, on offense, and then Illinois kind of trying to get themselves back into the CFP race, a crazy win over Purdue last weekend. If they can regroup and get this win, Oregon's really the only other one on the schedule that I would call, I don't want to say guaranteed, but a likely loss, at least on this schedule coming forward. So you got to feel pretty good if you're able to get this win. Obviously going to be a load to deal with. This is going to be a very, very slow game. Frankly, I would be surprised if we got anywhere over 18 possessions in this game. It's going to be absolutely a slugfest. But at the end of the day, whoever can come out on top, especially Illinois, if they can come out on top, they're still in this conversation for the CFP. If uh, Michigan comes out on top, it's at least a little bit of a consolation prize in a year that is not necessarily going the way that you want it to. Then we got to talk about a couple of teams that are facing off in a couple of weeks now, but have to deal with something before they get there. We'll start with AM. They do hate, head to Mississippi State this upcoming weekend, and we saw what Michael Van Buren can do last weekend. He's played really, really good football. I think he's one of those guys that you're going to want to watch out for in 2025, especially with that Jeff Levy offense. Could be a very, very fun thing down there in Starkville. I don't think they're going to win, uh, lose this game, but frankly, it's very scary. An interesting environment, a team that has a little bit of confidence after last week, so definitely got to be careful here. And then you do have LSU coming off a huge win um, at Ole Miss and heading to A&M right after this. They go to Fayetteville, and that is a nightmare to play in. We saw it with Tennessee a couple of weeks ago. We've seen it really 
for a long time over there in Fayetteville. Very, very tough place to play, and LSU is going to have to be very, very on their uh, on their P's and Q's to win this game. We'll break it down a little bit later in the week, but definitely a huge game for LSU. If they win it, I feel pretty good about where they're going going forward. And then we got a little bit more of the Big, Twin, uh, Big 12 thinning out, I hope. I think there's a couple of games that could possibly give us a little bit more clarity as we head forward. Texas Tech is going to be an interesting one. They face off against Baylor this upcoming weekend. BYU, Oklahoma State, obviously, and then Iowa State, UCF, like we talked about. So a lot of things can happen. No two ways about that. But if all three of those teams win, you get three teams totally knocked out of the race. You get three teams that have kind of elevated themselves. Maybe one of them loses and kind of uh, knocks themselves down a little bit of a peg. But there are two games that I'm really watching in this next weekend. And one of them involves Colorado. Colorado at Arizona is an interesting one because whoever loses that one is totally out. I think Arizona's probably already kind of on their way out. But possibly if they were able to win this, this one, they could get back into the fight. If they lose, they're out. If Colorado loses, I think they're probably out. There's too many games coming forward for Colorado that are a little bit sketchy that they probably need to get this one done. And then you got Kansas State, West Virginia, another one to watch. I think that's one of those that Kansas State and West Virginia both have a loss in conference. They're both playing relatively good football right now, but it's one of those games that if they don't get it, there's going to be a lot of questions. Now, if Colorado and Kansas State win those, then the other two are totally out. Feel pretty confident in that. If they lose... Everything goes insane, and I have no earthly idea where we're standing at the end of this week. So we had an incredible Week 7, no doubt about that, and we're going to follow it up with a remarkable Week 8. So many big-time games, those two that really headline everything, obviously, but then you got a number of ones that are going to define the Big 10, that are going to define the Big 12 and the ACC and the SEC, and a couple of Group of 5 matchups that are going to be huge for the CFP coming forward. So incredible week, no two ways about that. we got an incredible Week 7, and they're following it up with another remarkable one. So going to be awesome to watch that unfold but let's take our last break here and when we come back I'm going to break down my top 12 teams in the country this is very hard to do and it's getting harder by the week but at the end of the day I have my top 12 I feel pretty good about it going forward so we'll break it down right after this so stick with us